I said, really, here? He's like, yeah, come on. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so weird. So um, when I'm walking, I mean, let me tell you, I'm like dressed to like go somewhere nice. And we walk in there, he shows this card, and the first thing he does is stops at the sample station. <laughs> and he gets a sample, and I'm standing over there, and I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, come on, it's good. I was like, <laughs> He took me to every food. <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. We built a memory. We built a great, great memory. You know, my husband really took me out of my comfort zone. You know, we would go, we would go to restaurants and like a song will come on. And then he'll be like, do you want to dance? There's no dancing here. He's like, who said that? I said, there's nobody dancing. And then he'll get up and he'll be like, you're going to leave me standing here? I was so embarrassed. <laughs> but you know, it's good when you know, men help us to step out of our comfort zone, to you know, try other things. So anyways, I wanted to share that story. <laughs> it was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. Look, we got married. Look, we're on our 15 year. It worked. No, 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 that was only one time. <laughs> okay. All right, church, the title of my message this morning is about prayer. And it's time to stop praying safe. Like, it, it's time to stop praying safe. Father God, I ask, Lord, that you have your way this morning. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your power. I thank you for how you're going to move through me. And Father God, thank you for your son, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Do you catch yourself praying about the same things over and over and over and over again. The same struggles, the same things, in the same way and at the same time. Do you ever feel like your prayers are boring? You know, I once was uh, many years ago in our, our Celebrate Recovery in L.A., and there was this beautiful lady, I mean, beautiful lady. And every time she prayed, it was so like, wow. 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 I mean, that woman, I mean. And when it was my turn to pray, I didn't want to pray because her prayer was so wow. And my prayer was going to be so wow. We experience prayer differently. You should never feel embarrassed, ever, about how you pray. God hates showy prayers, fancy prayers. So there's no, there's no right or wrong way other than being open and honest with him. You know, he's not, he's not looking for showy, fancy, what's the right word? What's the right way to say it? No, as long as you're being open and you're being honest with him and you're coming with a true heart and not feeling embarrassed about when somebody else is praying, maybe we may think in our head, man, that girl prays really good. You know, there was, there was um, I think it was maybe two years ago, there's a, a, a lady that comes here to our church, and we had our group, and she's, she's my friend. I love her. She wouldn't mind. I just won't say her name. And, um, and anyway, so she didn't like to pray. 
Every time I asked her to pray, she didn't like it. She said, no, Pastor, I, I just don't know how. I just, you guys are all so, you know. And I would let her, I would kind of, okay, okay. And one day we went to a mini retreat. And the Lord said to me, I want you to tell her that the whole time that you're in that mini retreat, she's going to pray every morning. She's going to pray for breakfast. She's going to pray for lunch. She's going to pray for dinner. And she's going to pray before we go to sleep. Let me tell you, her life changed forever. Her prayer life is amazing. But she was afraid. She held back. Don't feel embarrassed. Just be open. And some of us don't pray because... Because we do feel like we're either going to be judged that we don't know how to pronounce certain words or how to put things in a prayer. But in Matthew 6, 7, 8, the Living Bible says, don't recite the same prayer over and over again. The heathen do, who think prayers are answered only by repeating them again and again. Remember, your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. You know, and that's the beautiful part about when we pray. And, I, 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 and I'm going to say I am guilty of this, of when we pray, that we pray, we surrender, and we are to give it to him. But when those things come up, we are to do the process all over again. We are to acknowledge that area, but we are to surrender it again and knowing that he's going to take care of it, that I don't need to worry, and then my prayer can move on to something else instead of that same thing. You know, like now, my, now I can move on to the next thing that I need to pray about because I've already surrendered this one to God. I already told him what I need. I already told him, and he already knows, but I told him, now I can start praying for this. And I'm going to wait on that. Your prayers matter. How you pray matters. What you pray matters. Your prayers, they move God. God wants us to take risk, to pray for ourselves in a way we never had, to pray for that someone who might not be doing good in a way that maybe we've never prayed for. Jesus will never ask us to do something he wouldn't do himself. He calls us to a life of faith, not a life of comfort. <clears throat> you know, when I met Henry, I didn't know Henry was a pastor. I didn't know all the, thank you so much. You know, after I, you know, this cough that I just keep, I've heard people got like, well, I'm just going to say like COVID, like the third time or something, and like their cough or something just kind of, but. Don't say that word. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I love you. Oh, let me open it. No, it's a, no. He's my brother. That's why brothers do. They're just like, here, sister. I love you. Know, you know I love you, bro. You know I love you. Your prayers matter, how you pray matters, what you pray matters. Jesus will never ask us to do something he wouldn't do himself. So I was saying about, I'm going to say, so when I met Henry, I didn't know he was in a full-time ministry, none of that. I was a baby Christian. As I, as I came to know God more fully, more, you know, like my purpose and everything, I'm going to say maybe about seven, maybe eight years ago, my prayer started to be, Lord, I want to be in the full-time ministry. I don't know what that looks like, Lord, but that's my passion. 
I, I, I want to be able to speak to women. I want to be able to, to, to share my life, Lord. Like, I, 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 I just want to do what you want me to do. I'm, I'm tired of me trying to figure it out. So that was my prayer. I mean, my prayer, my prayer, my prayer. Lord, I just want to do your will. I want to be in the full-time ministry. When I started working the Tropicana, I told my husband, this is it. This is my last job. I believe God is going to put me in the full-time ministry. It didn't happen because I was in training. For, for anybody to be in the full-time ministry, you got to go to th through training. And the training that you go through when you're in the full-time ministry is people. Not school. People. People are what teaches us character, patience, understanding, love, compassion, forgiveness. Can you hear me now? You know, it's people. So I went through training with people. Didn't happen. Next thing you know, the Lord opens another door for me at the Lazy Dog in Downey. My prayer is still the same. I want your will. I want to be in the full-time ministry. Don't know what it looks like, Lord, but that's what I want. It's my passion. Went to the interview. My boss said, Eva, where do you see yourself in five years in the full-time ministry? Wow, that's great. Wonderful. A year goes by. I'm at the Lazy Dog. And guess what? I'm in training. I'm in training. God uses people to train me. And let me tell you, I had tables that were like 10 Caucasians, and I would be so nervous. And I'll be like, Lord, why am I so nervous? I just, I just need to take an order. Why do I get like this? And then there would be a table of seven Caucasians. There I go again. Oh, my gosh, Lord, why do I get so nervous? Like, why do I get like this, God? And you know what the Lord said to me? He said, if you want to be in the full-time ministry, you don't get to choose who comes to your church. Just like you don't get to choose who sits at your table. When God revealed that to me, guess what happened? Pfft. Something happened inside. I was like, you know what? I get it. I get it. Time goes by. Two years, three years. We've been coming back and forth to Fresno. I feel the Lord, the Holy Spirit say, you're moving. And I felt it here belly and I told Henry God is moving us we're moving something is happening in Fresno let me tell you the Lord showed me I want you to clear your cabinets I want you to throw everything away that you don't need and when I told my husband listen I hear God telling me we're moving I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what it looks like. And he's asking me to go through the cabinets and get everything out. And I'm going to do it. Gave everything away. Next thing you know, my boss. And let me tell you, this is prayers are powerful. You want your future as God to have control of your future. Months later, my boss, Patrick, I love you if you're watching. He said, Eva, we're, I'm going to use one of your tables because we're going to interview some people. I said, who's leaving? Oh, nobody's leaving. I already knew I was moving. I just didn't know when. And he said, no, nobody's leaving. He's like, we're opening a new Lazy Dog. Really? Where? In Fresno. What? 
No. He saw this face. And he looked at me. He said, are you moving? I said, Patrick, you have no idea what's happening right now. Let me tell you, God has a plan. And he has a purpose. Because the person that got hired to be the general manager for the Lazy Dog in Fresno, she was trained at my store. She got to see me work. She got to see how people loved me. She got to see that when I left the Lazy Dog in Downey, that there was something good that God was doing in my life. And when I packed my stuff and moved to Clovis, because I lived in a room, because God had called me here. As soon as I landed, Susan, I'm here. You start tomorrow. (laughs) Woo! Hallelujah! When it's God's plan, when God is in it, everything's going to go all right. Because when he's in it, he's in it. He's not in it halfway. He doesn't say, I'm going to do this much and you do this much. No. All the way. And here I am. Thank you, Jesus. When God wants to grow you, He makes you uncomfortable. He makes us uncomfortable. In Luke 22, 42, we hear Jesus pray a dangerous and vulnerable prayer. Luke 22, 42, Father, if you are willing, please take away this cup of horror from me. But I want your will, not mine. When we come to our Lord in prayer, in Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all, all that happens to us is working for our good. If we love God and are fitting into his plans, It's time for a change in our prayer life. It's time to start praying safe. You might be asking yourself, how do I do that? Where do I start? You start by setting a time. Set a time with you and God. Pick a time in the morning, in the evening, Set a time where you want to be with him, either in your bedroom, in your closet, at the kitchen table. You set that time where you want to be with God. The Lord also wants our prayers to be honest, desperate, and real. Are your prayers desperate? I know I'm working on that. That's why God gave me this message. Because my prayers are not that desperate. You know what? I've got comfortable. But you know, my husband asked me a question recently. He said, are you ready? Because I know what God has for me. He's shown me. And my husband says, are you ready? (sighs) I am ready. Mark 11, 22, 25. Jesus said to his disciples, if you only have faith in God, this is the absolute truth. You can say to this Mount of Olives, rise up and fall into the Mediterranean, and your command will be obeyed. All that's required is that you really believe And have no doubt. Listen to me. You can pray for anything. And if you believe, 
you have it, it's yours. What do you believe this morning? I believe that my son, he's going to come. When? I don't know, but he is. I believe that my youngest son will call me someday. When? I don't know, but I believe it. I believe that God is going to do with me what he said he's going to do with me because he spoke it. Do you believe your own prayers? Do you believe your own requests to God? When you pray, do you believe that he can do that for you or do you pray and then leave guessing or... Well, Lord, it's there. You might want to do it or not, but in the end, it's his will. Amen. You know, there's, there's, there's another um, prayer um, that I do want to share, and it's this beautiful family here. How long did you wait for your home? <laughs> A while. <laughs> Three years. And you went from how many bedrooms to how many bedrooms? Three years. Do you know that there's people that wait 20 years? There's people that wait 15 years. Look, my husband waited for me 25 years. (laughs) Are you ready? Are you ready to start praying differently for yourself, for you? Are you ready to start saying, God, I'm ready, God. What do you have for me? Listen, and if that's your constant prayer every day, every day, Lord, I'm here, I'm your vessel. He loves those prayers because he knows you're open and he can use you. I believe that some of us have a calling I believe that words have been spoken to us, and I want you to hear this, not by people. Not by people. We've heard God's word, either when we read it or when we were in prayer. He spoke to us, something about us, something he wants to do, something maybe he wants to remove. You know, and, and he wants to take us. And if, if you are ready to pray differently and say, you know what, Lord, I'm ready to take on what you have called me to do. I'm ready to say, I'm, here I am, Lord. Use me. You know, and um, this wasn't part of my message, but I want to say a lot of us have been struggling for the last months, the last two months, the last three months, I know I have. I know I have. But that doesn't stop God's power. It does not stop God's power. And listen, and no matter what it is that we've, we've gone through in the month or two months or three months, that does not disqualify us. God doesn't say, I don't know you. God is just waiting for us. You You know, and um, I do want to pray, if you have a calling, if there is something God has spoken over your life, I do want to take on this journey with you because I know what God has called me to do and I know what God has asked me to do for that to happen. So if that's you, I do want to call you up. I do want to call the um, Melissa and Stephen up here. I want to pray for you. I want to have our leaders, um, you know, Loretta and the prayer team. If there's something God has spoken into your life, come on, my husband, come up here. I just wanted to say this, that 
if you're in this building right now, God's called you into the ministry. Amen. Now, you would think ministry, you know, you got to go to Bible college. Or you gotta, no. And ministry is working for God in whatever capacity you can and surrendering to him. We are an active church. Our faith is active. I think what Pastor is saying is let God activate some faith in you today. Let them dreams wake up. Say yes, Lord, today. Say, well, I don't know what I'm saying yes to. That's what faith is. Are you ready to work for God? Man, we need teachers for our kids. We need leaders for our youth. We need builders to build. We need dreamers to help us dream us into a bigger facility. We need soul winners. We need people in the sound. We need a drummer. We need, I could go on. Who, who, no, we need it. I believe all the treasure we need is in this house right now. So you're not lost treasure anymore, right? All you got to do is say yes. And then you see, see one of us, one of us leaders. But, of course, the first thing that God wants is your heart. Heads bowed. Eyes closed. You hear you saying, yep. Pastor, you're right. That's the right place to start. I, I want to give God my heart. I want to give him my heart. I want you to stand to your feet. You want to give God your heart? Just stand to your feet. Come on. It's all over the building. Mm, yes, Lord, we want to give you our heart, Lord. I want to give you my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to give you my thoughts. I want to give you my plans. I want to give you my future, but more than that, I give you my heart, and I want to do it right now. Right now, Lord. As we come, Lord, we commit ourselves wholly and once again to you, Lord. Forgive us, for we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In that we have failed, God, in what you said were the most important commandments. But here we stand. Forgive us, Lord, our trespasses. Move in our hearts and in our lives. Come on, let's pray this prayer of dedication. Then we're going to open up the altars. Pray, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Thanking you for rescuing me. You saved me. You filled me. You gave me life. And so right now, I want to appropriate all of that life. In Jesus, Christ. in Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit of God, Holy Spirit of God. Move, in me. move in me, flow through me, flow through and me. even as I stand right here in your presence, speak to me about your plan and your purpose for me, my ministry, my family, my children, my community, this valley, the world. Help us to find our place. Help me to find my place. Thank you for coming into my heart and forgiving me of my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, there's so much that has been spoken today. Uh, you know, right at the beginning with a couple of those songs, that song where he said, Lazarus, come out. There's a dead man. He was put in a, in, a, in a tomb. And he had been there for a bit, so long that the, the, the disciples said, He's stinking. He's stinky. He's dead. Didn't scare Jesus. Jesus called him out. First, he said, Move away the stone. And he spoke his name, Lazarus, come forth. 
then the other song we sang about Jesus Christ being the resurrection and resurrect the resurrected King is resurrecting me and you need some resurrecting you need some things coming back to life maybe it's your finances Maybe it's your relationship with it with your significant other. Maybe it's your relationship with your with your man or your woman, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Maybe you know, maybe it's a career, maybe it's a calling. Something when I say you need it to come back to life, you know exactly what that is. Come and let us pray. Come on, what is it? Come, yep. Yeah. We got our pastors here, we got our leaders here. Let's get our intercessors up here. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. All of our intercessors, all of our leaders, come on up. I need, I need, we need, we need some prayer warriors up here. Come on, they're coming. Kuriyabasanda. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. And you can wait because we're going to come we're going to pray for you and we're going to find you if you're out there you're one of the leaders you want to come pray come on up let's sing to the Lord you call me out upon the waters the great unknown where feet may fail and there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name, and keep my eyes above the when oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Your grace abounds in deep waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you've never failed and you won't stop now so I will call rise my soul will rest in your embrace for i am yours and you are mine oh i am yours god you're mine Stronger in the presence of my Savior. 
Love you. 